proud of our five seniors, four that played, and Kay was injured. They set the school record for most wins that Nick and Jonah did uh, school history. It's quite an accomplishment. They believed in our rebuilding program when they signed uh, with us four years ago, and they've had great careers, both thousand point scores. Nick's the second all time leading rebounder. Jonah just set the three point record tonight in school history, broke Elijah Stewart's. You're going to be mad. Uh, told him not to miss somebody uh, that last uh, game we played. Uh, and, and so those guys have meant so much to our program. What, what a fitting way to end. Uh, Jonah missed those free throws, I think, on purpose to set up that last shot. Uh, he wanted a flair for the dramatic. He's going to remember that shot the rest of his life, uh, as the rest of us will. So uh, give UCLA credit. UCLA's playing outstanding basketball. What Coach Cronin and their players have done. Very impressive to win seven in a row coming in here. Uh, they're a very, very good basketball team, and, and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll uh, see them in the NCAA tournament if, if, uh, if we're fortunate enough to uh, uh, be selected. So uh, it was just a great, great win. Andy, do you feel like now that you guys are playing your best basketball going into the NCAA uh, basketball tournament? Yeah, we're playing great defense. The whole Arizona to 48 last week. Uh, UCLA to 52, Arizona State to 61. I think we're 15 and 0, six, when you whole team 65 and under. Uh, we're a really good defensive team, but we're very tough. Uh, we have uh, uh, guys that have bought in all year. How we've taught defense, I give our staff a lot of credit. Coach Hart, Coach Capco, and Coach Mobley, uh, what they've done uh, every day, a daily basis, weekly basis on, a, on the defensive side of the ball. We, we changed a little bit how we tied it this year, and, and we just decided to be the toughest team we could. And some of that is uh, the personnel we brought in. We have seven new players and only three returnees. And, and the grad transfers, Utomi uh, and, and Adlish, are, are really tough upperclassmen. And, and so we, we've been uh, very, very proud of our uh, defensive effort. Uh, we believe we can go in and compete next week, and if we're going to win games, as you saw, as you see our offense, our offense is extremely streaky. For a variety of reasons, uh, but we have 22 wins because of our defense. Andy, can you take us through those last nine seconds? What was your perspective of that, and was Jonah always going to be the guy that took that shot? Well, we called timeout, try to ice the second free throw, and I actually thought Riley was going to make it because they hadn't missed a shot all night. Free throw, they're 14 and 15, so I expected him to make it. <laughs> and we just gave Joe get the ball to Jonah and uh, try to set a high ball screen. If they switched it, which they did, uh, then he was. Gonna try to take the big and, and go to work. And uh, it was his call whether to drive or, or, or you step back and made a big shot. But at that point, you want to put the ball in your uh, your, your best uh, playmaker's hand. And that's what he did. He made a huge shot for us. Coach, where does this win rank for you? Well, I, I think uh, anytime you you win a game with a sold out crowd against UCLA, when you're you're, you're you're trying to fight for position, we just tied for third in the league. Um, uh, two years ago, we came in second, first time in 25 years at USC basketball. So, so, so when you're trying to build a program and you're trying to elevate, uh, you, th these wins are, are huge for your program because it helps you establish your credibility. Uh, uh, and, and also, it, it, it's th these players that work so hard, it's, it's nice to uh, have school record for wins like Jonah and Nick do. And, and, and so this was just a, a great way to end uh, their home career. Uh, we have a lot of basketball. Uh, left hopefully and it starts on uh, Thursday in Las Vegas. What was the scene in the locker room afterward? Uh, they, they, a lot of guys got wet with water. And, uh, <laughs> President Fault was uh, generous enough to come in. She, she's been very supportive and uh, so she said a few words, to, to a couple pictures and, uh, and then we got out of there. But uh, yeah, players are they're, they're very excited um, and deservedly so. Uh, Nyeka didn't get too involved on the offensive end to start the game. How did he get more? Well, we tried to get the ball. We called numerous plays, but UCLA is a really good defensive team, and they're they're very well coached, and they they front the post, and they're physical, and they they shoving they're shoving on Yeka on every possession, and grabbing him and pushing him, and and they and they try to keep the ball out of his hands. So we tried to, if you notice, we tried to get the ball. They're hard hedging on the ball screen, so instead of getting him the ball in a low post, which we did a few times, we tried to get him the ball at the foul line. And, and, and get them off their bodies because their big guys are hedging our ball screen. So we, we got the ball quickly to him, especially in the second half. I thought he made three or four really big time plays. He hit the dunk down the middle. He hit Isaiah for the, the, the layup. He got fouled. He made another good pass out to our shooter. Uh, the last, the last uh, time he charged over the guy, uh, that wasn't executed perfectly. But uh, 
Uh, he, he's, uh, I told him we have to work on some sidestepping and some, some you, know, you, you, just, you just put your head down and you, you gotta have a little more of your game than that. Uh, I'm just, I was joking with him because he, uh, he uh, he's such a good player once in a while, you just have to reel him back in. But uh, he, he just played a great game tonight, had 16 points and, and um, uh, he did get 12 shot attempts, uh, but we got, his biggest thing is uh, his turnovers. When, when he uh, gets pressure, he gets sped up. Uh, he's going to improve on that uh, as he keeps going. Hopefully, it starts next week. You talked about the offense being streaky when you look at, at half and you're shooting 31%. Is that now that the team has gotten used to the way this offense kind of gets into a rhythm? Can you tell that they they're not really panicking? I guess when it's when they're shooting poorly, even to start the game. It, it was. This was a typical USC 2020 basketball game. <laughs> we don't have Jordan McLaughlin, Anthony Mel, and Julian Jacobs. We used to score 85 points a night, running up and down the court, and playmaking everywhere. And uh, this team is a grinded out, tough team. Uh, look, our three seniors, Utomi, Nick, and Jonah, were three for 18 at halftime. So uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't bring that up. But what am I going to say? Well, it's tremendous. Uh, just, just a, a amazing way to finish his career here at home because uh, Jonah, when we were building the program, he was a, a highly recruited player out of Santa Monica High School, and he decided to join uh, uh, McLaughlin and Metu and Boat Wright and, and, and uh, Elijah Stewart and DeAnthony Melton came in with Jonah. At the time, we had like seven guards on our team. And we always, and Coach Jason Hart always brings this up. When DeAnthony Melton and Jonah Matthews committed to USC, uh, we had seven or eight guards, maybe eight guards on our team that were supposed to come back. And we had some guys leave. Jacobs ended up leaving early for the draft. Uh, I think uh, Kate Reinhardt transferred and, and somebody else. So, so when they walked in the door, there were no guarantees for playing time. We didn't guarantee them anything. And, and so what happened? Jonah played 20 minutes a game as a freshman. D'Anthony Melton ended up starting for us after the sixth or seventh game. And D'Anthony starting for the Memphis Grizzlies right now. And Jonah's had an amazing, one of the all-time great shooting guard careers in USC history. So uh, it's very fitting that he, he can end his career uh, with a three-point record. Uh, a big shot like that, that that he'll remember. But but it's a testament to, to uh, his development uh, as a player. He, he's actually a better defensive player than he is offensive player. He's our best defender. He's probably the best guard defender in the Pac-12 right now. And, and so... Uh, I can't say enough positives about how he's he, he's developed as a player and what he's meant to our program. Andy, the fact that, that Jonah is the son of a coach, how how much does that factor in? I mean, do you are there things that you notice during a game or during practice that kind of lock that in? Yeah, his father Phil has been a, a longtime basketball coach at a, at a variety of levels, head coach, assistant coach. So he's been he grew up around the game, and, and as I I did as well. So I think uh, you. Uh, as a coach's son, you, you, you pick things up, and his, his Jonah's basketball IQ is, is as high as any player we've ever coached. He just, and, and a lot of that stems from his basketball family and his father just being around it. Uh, uh, so it, it certainly helps him offensively, but it really helps him defensively. What, what he anticipates defensively is, is, is really fun to watch. Coach, what is it about your program that has you bring in seven guards at one, in one time, and then have guys stick around for this long to kind of see their career? Uh, well, you have 13 scholarships on, on a roster, and it just some, some classes are smaller, some are bigger. Sometimes you need to bring more guys in. In a decent day and age, you don't know when guys are going to leave early for the NBA. Some players will transfer. There's over a thousand transfers in Division One basketball, and we've had our share as well. It's an average of about about two and a half per team per year. Uh, so you have to uh, recruit uh, for, for need, but also sometimes you, you get caught off uh, guard where, where players will leave and you didn't expect them to. So, uh, but, but in that instance, we always give Jonah and, and DeAnthony credit for walking in the door, knowing that there are so many players that are probably ahead of them in the depth charts. But, but by uh, the first game, they're out there playing big minutes as freshmen and helping us win. Tw we won 26 games at school record. 26 games that year, won two games in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and, and uh, so, so, so that, that, that competitive spirit of Jonah uh, showed, in, in, in especially in, in, as well as the Anthony. Now, Nick, Nick came in, same time, and, and Nick had Shemezi and Metu and Benny Boat right in front of him. And what Nick did, he just, he just worked like crazy, and as a freshman, 
he would come off the bench. And then when Benny got hurt, he got hurt twice that, that year and the following year. So, so when Nick was young, he was playing behind those guys. But when Benny got hurt, Nick's work ethic and his skill set, his offensive rebounding, hit, hit way he's moved his feet on defense, he's got great hands and feet, he was able to come in and help us win those 26 games as well. Uh, and, and then the next year we won 24. So, so I know we're talking a lot about Jonah, but Nick has been just as important to our program because uh, of how he, he developed as a player as well. And, and now he's the second all-time leading rebounder in USC history. That's pretty cool. Andy, um, you said Jonah sort of finished up his career on the high note you expected. What, what was your thought when Nick picked up the flavor foul? Well, first of all, their career's not done because we have next week. Yeah. We, we intend to go win some more games, or at least try. Uh, but Nick is, uh, hadn't had a flagrant foul all season, and what a, what a time to have it with five and a half minutes left in the UCLA game at home when we were up, I don't know what, four at the time or five. Uh, so, you know, it, it was a little disappointing that, that he waited all season to do it now uh, because he had 10 last season. So he's gotten a lot better with his emotions, and, and he's had a really good senior season. Uh, but uh, we expect him to come out in Las Vegas next week and play some ball and, and, and really help us win. Talk about just being a typical offensive performance, 41% from the field, 41% from three, and 41% from the line. I didn't see that. <laughs> we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you ever remember? I don't anything? think I've ever seen a stat sheet like that, especially on our team. Uh, yeah. yeah, we, we – uh, yeah, free throws. Uh, Onyeka, Onyeka is a 75% shooter, and he missed two. And Jonah is a 78% shooter, and he missed three. Uh, and when, when you're a coach, you want your best shooter shooting him, right? It only makes sense. And, and those are two of our best shooters on the team, and Utomi's one of them as well. So uh, Onyeka, the thing in high school, Onyeka never missed a pressure free throw. Never. Watched him for four years. Onyeka never missed a pressure free throw, and I'm going to remind him of that tomorrow, and, and he better not miss another one. What does it mean to, to get last to uh, top four seed and get that by in the first round? Well, we're tied for third in the Pac-12, uh, and, and uh, I'm not sure what seed we're on for three or four, but that really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, the the Pac-12 is an exceptional league this year. It's as good as it's ever been, and it's, it's very deep. Uh, you see a lot of good teams have the, – the bottom of the league is not a bottom. Uh, when, you know, Washington is, is, I think, currently last in the league, and there's talent as anybody. So when you play Washington, you, you – uh, it, so, so our league is very, very deep this year, uh, and, and anybody can beat you. So the Pac-12 tournament, I think, is wide open. It means a lot for us because you get that day, that, that extra day of rest. If, if you want to try to go to, get to the championship game, I think that extra day of rest uh, certainly will help. But uh, at the same time, uh, any team can win games in Las Vegas starting on Wednesday. Great. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.